Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Today it's all about the transient shape of Bitbig Studio. And I already made a video about this um, some years back. But I want to show you some two examples how I use the transient shaper uh, on a daily basis. Uh, because I really think how you can look at it is that the transient shaper is a reversed compressor. But sometimes when I need a compressor, I reach for a transient shaper instead. I'll show you how I use this um, in some examples and then maybe you can uh, use it also in your productions. So in this example here, I have a drum bass loop and I try to bring a drum loop, which I get or got from a sample library um, and some main drums I made here with XO and E kick. So this is my main drum set. And I try to bring in here this random drum loop and the shaker loop. And I want to bring them together. So I want to clue them together. And usually you use a compressor, dial in the threshold, dial in the ratio and attack and the decay times until it sounds like it's vibrating together, right? And what I use or what I do most of the times is Instead of having here the drum loop at the same volume as the main drums, and then using a compressor and bringing in this vibrating stuff, I dial down the drum loop and the shaker loop here way to way down to minus eight or something. I don't know. So you can clearly hear my, my main drum set, but the drum loops way in the background and then use a transient shaper on the bus or transient control on the bus and then bring everything in between the main hits the kick and the snare so so bring it up every time the kick and the snare doesn't play and this sounds like this so Play it all together. So I switch off the transient control now. And you can see on this graph here when I freeze this uh, freeze this uh, visual, um, every time the kick plays, the volume stays normal as I dialed in here the drum loop and the audio sh uh, and the shaker. And then every time in between the kick and the snare, uh, the transient control raises the volume here, which gives you this pumping volume, right? And when I try to do drum bass, I do this all the time when I bring shaker loops and um, yeah, some random drum loops together or want to glue them together because it's easier to just put on the transient control and bring up the sustain and then maybe play around with the timing setting instead of you know dialing in all the settings for attack decay threshold uh, ratio on the compressor so sometimes this is just faster and has the same effect it's maybe not exactly the same sound um, but it does the job sometimes. Okay, so I want to give you uh, this here also the same thing in a new, yeah, new project here where I just play together a kick drum maybe. Let's just make a quick small loop here. So this is kick drum. Maybe it's too slow. Maybe do some side trance. I'm. I heard a lot of people actually like side trance. So let's make a nice kick drum here. Uh, frequency shifter, distortion. It's something like this. And then maybe you have a bass line um, that you want to, you know, duck down every time the, the kick drum plays. And you can also do this exactly the same way 
as we did before with the drum loops. Um, I think Psytrin has this, this, these fast bass lines, right? It's too slow. More like this. So, and then instead mixing here yeah, the, the, the bass in and using sidechain compression, uh, compression or um, um, compressor on the bus, I use just a transient shaper here on the, on the bus. It's in control. You have just you know two knobs you have to play around with, so not so many uh, changing um, parts. Um, so maybe also add here some of these mid ranges here, mid range vocal sounds, and maybe a random later here. Hold, hold. And here you can do the same, you basically bring down the volume, but because we have on the bus here the transient shaper, everything in between the kick goes up. Just to, to show you what I mean by this, just to make some, some examples. Something like this. And you can play around with the timing here, yeah? so you can get a feel for the groove. Without the transient control, it sounds like this. Um, the second way how I use the transient control is in yeah in conjunction with the FX3 or FX2 device um, a lot by maybe when you do drum and bass. And you have a kick drum, maybe a snare sound, and also a head, I had here, and maybe go here to 172, and in some hi hats here, like this. Maybe also a snare and a kick. Maybe a hard clip on there. like this and here also fx2 um, distortion peak limiter
Yeah, here also we can use, of course, the transient control on this one. What I tend to use here, the FX2 uh, or FX3, um, and then put the transient control in each of these things, or maybe just only in the middle here, and bring out the knock. Um, for instance, here, this drum loop sounds like this. Right now, only in the middle frequency, I introduce this uh, attack, this hard attack here. And maybe in the top here, you can also use the transient control to bring down the sustain. Make it more dry. Or bring out the hi-hats more and tone them down here. And then after the drums, I use, of course, a hard clip here. So I drive the... Um, drive the transients into a clipper. I might use EQ here. Yeah. And because you have this on the bus, you basically also increase here the, the attack transient from the kick drum also. The kick, the snare, and the hi-hat, the bits of, bits of the hi-hat, because you can hear the kick drum here. Some, some tops of the kick you can hear, of course, in this frequency range. So you can bring really out this, you know, the snappy attack when you want to do some drum and bass. So this is without here yeah, everything, right? It sounds like not really punchy and um, in your face aggressive. This is like much better. And then maybe you need a drum loop here. I don't know to mix it in. Um, Um, this is probably uh, lies. Oh, this is way too fast, right? So I tone this down here yeah, and mix it together with the kick and the snare, and you don't even need to. Sometimes you don't need to add the low cut or anything because it's so quiet. Um, because the low cut is only needed if you want to, you know, bring out the kick every time, or bring the kick out of this drum loop when the kick plays from your original drum set. So without. Can really play around here and sometimes it's it's an it's enough to instead of pushing the attack just removing the sustain this is also sometimes enough to you know make it pop Was missing. And 
And there you have it. Uh, basically, two uh, examples how I use the transient control is um, instead of compressor to make it everything pumping and um, cluing together, and then using here it in conjunction with the uh, uh, multiband FX3 to make I think you can't hear it uh, to make it pop, uh, to make it snap, to make uh, drums snappier in the mid range um, where it needs to be. So uh, in some examples here, I really over overdo the effect, but just to, to make it clear what I mean and what, um, how it should sound or what I mean by that, right? So it's just an example. And you can also use this, I think, uh, with the snaps, snap-ins, um, the kilohertz uh, plug-ins. I don't know if, if this works. And of course, with the transient shaper, of your liking, maybe there are some uh, multiband uh, transient controls, and um, yeah, it's not limited to Bitwig. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video. Please subscribe to the channel, uh, leave a thumbs up if you like the video, and until next time, see you. Bye.